For the first video of 2023, it will be quite fun to kick things off with another Phobias of Dragons episode. So let's bring these illustrations to life. After that terrible incident, at the cabin, I need to take my mind off that humiliating defeat by Loki and his minions. His army is growing in strength and those new lackeys working with him were more powerful than I thought. I might have to be careful in future. Anyway, it's time for today's lecture at the Department of Multiversal Matters and this should prove to be a distraction as it's been a while since I gave a lecture on any creatures here. Although this one should be more Ehrenfeld's domain as it's Phobias as Dragon. Perhaps I should see what he's doing. Hey the Monoclass, how's it going? What can I do for you my dear? Well, I have a lecture to do on phobias as dragons, but seeing as you're a dragon expert, I thought you might want to join in on this one. I think you did the other lectures on these phobia creatures, and I thought you might enjoy telling a tale or two. Sure, lass. I think this should be a fun one. In that case, would you like to start us off? Well, how about I start with a wee beastie? That's a rather disturbing affinity. One that is able to break even the strongest of wheels over time. You see, despite the fact people can be on their own and keep their sanity, however, there be occasions where being on your own can be far worse than even death itself. That is because one of the strangest and perhaps interesting dragons good old Ehrenfeld has come across. Perhaps the biggest and most powerful fear to ever exist. Although, this one is a bit of a paradox. You see, this one is what I like to call the Endless Void. And as the name suggests, this one has a rather unique and daunting power. This dragon is the phobia of nihilophobia, the fear of nothing. Like the saying goes, there's nothing to fear than fear itself. Though nothing is what this fear is in its entirety. You see, this beast is dark in colour, but that isn't the problem. If this foul creature manages to get its wings around, yeah, it becomes so dark that the pitch black of night looks like a sunny day in comparison. All sound and sense of anything around you is cut off completely. This beastie waits with its eyes closed, ensuring the victim can only see darkness, with the lack of any stimuli except for the edges of the inner wings as they roam around. The skin of this beast is too tough, it can't be pierced by any known weapon. The only weakness to get out of this is to either survive the void created with your insanity intact, or get this beastie to open its eyes and strike it without hesitation, causing it to flinch in pain. Let me tell you though, this beastie can go for days without moving open its eyes, waiting for the moment that fear and paranoia kick in, causing the person to go insane before slowly opening its mouth and letting the person walk into it before devouring them. This can be several days or weeks, but over time the lack of any stimuli and pure darkness of the void, pure nothing sets in your mind's eye. It is not long before the mind of an average soul will shatter. It is what the endless void is waiting for, all the time feeding on the fear and despair of its victim before eating what remains. That was a rather interesting one, but maybe it's time for me to talk about a rather unusual one from Earth 666. There is a dragon based on a phobia some have in this dimension. This one is rather peculiar and possibly the most random creature you've ever seen, based on the fear known as Crossrhombophobia, a rather strange phobia and one that you need to take seriously. This is the fear of cookie jars. A fear of cookie jars? Y you're not serious are you? I mean a cookie jar? What kind of fear is that? Next you'll be telling me that there's a dragon made out of string for a fear of strings. Yeah I mean Ooh, look, a scary string dragon. I mean, <laughs> really? Demonica gave the agent a stern look. It was clear she was being deadly serious and did not find his comments amusing or funny in any way. I think it's a bit hypocritical to make fun of someone else's fear, even if it is the form of a dragon in my universe. You may find it funny now. However, I can assure you that fear is not a laughing matter. Shall I let everybody know your fear? Uh, no, that's fine. It won't happen again. Good. And as for that comment about a dragon made of string, we'll cover that creature later on. Wait, that's really a dragon made out of string? Now, back to the topic at hand. This is the dragon made out of cookie jars. Well, it looks like it's made out of cookie jars, but its true form is not really known. The only thing that's been seen is, well, 
cookie jars. It hides its true body underneath these, and the only thing we know is its mouth and part of the head has a strange look. It's rather a bizarre creature. As for this creature, it likes to chase its prey, allowing them to hear it approaching with the clanging around of the jars hitting each other as it moves. This dragon uses the sound to cause a subconscious fear in the minds of those who are afraid of, well, the cookie jars. Everyone with this fear knows the sound of the jars clanging together. As it gets close to its victim, it will open and close the lids on the jars, increasing the fear that they have. After a while, this dragon will show itself cornering the prey before shaking the jars and its lids until the victim is driven insane by the constant clanging. This means that even if you close your eyes, it will not help you out of this dire predicament. Once the person has been driven insane enough for this dragon's tastes, it will trap the essence of their fear into the jars on its body and slowly consume them over time, while its victim is left in a near death-like state from the encounter. Ah, that one seems like a bit of a handful. Though that tail has got me craving one of those there cookies. Maybe we should get some after we're done here then. Either way, that one was a bit of a strange one. What's for the next fear, lass? Caporiphobia. Aye, that'd be the one. Caporiphobia. Has a nice ring to it, and this one is perfect for those who have a fear of salty armoured beasts that are known to put seafaring folk into a pinch. If that wasn't a clue for you. Then I guess I should tell you about this beastie. Tis one that is covered in a tough armour like shell from top to toe. With a set of claws that are large and can crush boulders like they were nothing. Tis of course a fear for those who aren't shellfish in nature. But one that will have them in a tight spot. Arr. Although you're having a good time, Erinfold, it might be worth getting on with it. You seem to be making a lot, and I mean a lot, of bad puns. Suit yourself, lass. No need to be crabby about it. You see what I did there? Demonica gave Erinfold a rather stern look. Fair enough. You don't seem to be too impressed, lass. I'll continue with the info on this fear. Tis a fear of crabs, and this dragon has the look of one of these armoured crustaceans. Tis a fine beast to fight. Not only does it have all the features of a dragon, wings and all, but a tough hide of this creature and multiple legs. It is a strange one. This dragon, or rather strange beastie, likes to walk sideways like an actual crab. Its mannerisms and actions ensure that those who have a fear of these creatures are scared and terrified to the bone before it chases them down. Faster than it looks and able to climb over most steep surfaces and walls, this creature is able to chase down its prey over land or in the depths of the sea. Breathing underwater is also an ability of this one, allowing this creature to sneak up or hide under the water's surface to watch and catch its prey unawares from the murky depths below. So it's a fun beastie to battle if you're not afraid of this one, and have a member of your party that tastes nice and sweet to this foul beast. Though beware of the claws of this one, there have been many adventurer left in two, once this creature has had its fill of fear from their souls. So what y'all think? Are you man or woman enough to face this one and return in one piece? Well, now that we have that beastie out of the way, did I hear right? You're going to talk about a dragon made from string, was it? That's right. As mentioned earlier by someone, a dragon made of string is the last fear. The fear is known as linophobia, and it is the fear of string. That being said, this is the strangest and most unique dragon in today's lecture. This one has a body made from string and can take on many shapes and forms. At times, it can be rather colourful looking, like a mass of string balls coming towards you. This creature can be rather gentle at times, although when it has you in its sights, if it detected even the slightest fear towards the string it's made of. From an adventurer or a traveller, this dragon will employ a wide range of terrifying tactics. From unwinding its body to long strands of string inside of a room before wrapping around its prey, trapping them while taking their fear in as the victim is entangled within the strands. This is just one of the attacks that this creature can do. Another is to change its shape to look somewhat cuter than it actually is. That being said, you would think being made of string, this one would be easy to cut to pieces. 
The problem is that this string is very elastic and tough enough that almost all blades and sharp objects are unable to cut through it. With that said, it does have a few weaknesses, even after being made from such a fragile material. I use the term fragile lightly. The string fibre of this dragon's body is actually one of the toughest materials to ever exist, which is not unexpected seeing as this is a phobia that has evolved into a dragon over the past few millennia. There have also been many adventurers who have not had a fear of string fall victim to this creature, developing a fear during the encounter. The only sharp elements that are on this creature are the teeth and claws. They are also made from the string fibres, but the strands are intertwined into a sharp and reinforced part on this creature's body. Each one is like a spear that can shred most rocks and materials into pieces. Well now, I wouldn't mind going a few rounds against this beastie. Seems to me that it could be just the challenge good old Ehrenfold has been itching for these last few days. Ever since that scuffle at the cabin we had, my old bones have been a bit restless, let me tell you now, lass. Oh yeah, when Loki and his crew completely annihilated you and your... Just as the agent was about to finish his sentence, his gaze met with the monarch in Ehrenfold, and it was clear that this was a sore subject, even if it was just made out to be a rumour among the lower rankings of the Department of Multiversal Matters. I think this is ample time to end the lecture today. Ehrenfold, let's go get those cookies you were on about earlier. I'm feeling a bit peckish now. What do you guys think of the first episode of 2023? Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I had a lot of fun bringing these phobias to life as dragons. Which one was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. Monday, we're going to continue with our Ben 10 Kaijus in a live stream. And we'll be doing Heat Blast. So I look forward to seeing all of those that can make it. If you enjoyed this episode, why not check out some of the other Phobias of Dragon videos on the channel. I've got two other ones and we've got a whole host of things like turning My Hero Academia characters into dragons, as well as some other crossovers and that. That's it for now. Stay safe everybody. Catch you next time.